Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today, we have a case study coming for you. I'm going to tell you about how we generated over $140,000 during Q4 of 2021. To do this, we're going to go through all of the steps that we took. And the goal here is to explain not only the methods and the process itself, but also the thought process that goes behind something like this. And also the things that you should take into consideration when you're planning a business that you intend to scale to higher in revenue. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So this is a store that we ran from October until the end of December 2021, or actually we cut it a bit earlier because after Christmas it slowed down severely. So until around Christmas 2021, that's when it stopped. Within this period of time, we generated $140,000 of revenue. This on the screen here right now is the dashboard screenshot that shows the revenue from fourth quarter of 2021. And what we're going to be covering in this video is the essential steps in the process. So we're going to talk about the product, what you should take into account when selecting the product. We're going to talk about the ad strategy and we're going to talk about the other essential things that go on when you're scaling to higher numbers, both within the ad strategy and not really related to the ad strategy. So other elements like optimizing the funnel and so on. The first thing that I want to talk about is choosing the right product. And that is exceptionally important because I talk to a lot of people that are building their e-commerce businesses and some other people who have been running their e-commerce businesses for a while. And this is an idea that is built into a lot of people's mind when they think about choosing a product for their e-commerce business. A lot of people think that you need to have a revolutionary product or something that is really high ticket and really, really different in some way. That is definitely not the case though. I've covered this before. There's this video right here that is on the screen right now called The Truth About Winning Products, where I give my entire opinion and my view about how to find winning products and what characteristics you should identify in a product to make it a winning product. So I'm gonna leave a link in the corner here. So go ahead and click that and watch this video if you haven't watched it yet and then come back because this is gonna be very important to what I'm about to say next. Now, picking up on what I've said earlier in that video, a winning product may be a lot of different things. A winning product is not necessarily a low ticket product or a high ticket product or any specific product for that matter. A winning product can be anything. The important thing and what really turns it into a winning product is that you play to the product strengths. So in this case, and in this particular case, we have a low ticket product with a very, very wide mass market appeal. So what do you do in that case? In that case, you want to scale it because sometimes when you have these low ticket product, very, very wide mass market appeal, it's not always easy to find other related products or to just expand on the offer as it is. And sometimes you can do it, but to do that, you need a wider audience to sell to because the product doesn't really appeal to any specific passionate niche, if you know what I mean. It's just very, very wide and it's for anyone. So when you have a wide enough audience, you can expand on that and even brand it. But when you're still at low scale, because you're not appealing to any specific niche, it might be hard for you to pinpoint who your specific target audience is or what other products you might want to look for, or if you should even private label the product because you're not sure if it's going to be sustainable in the long run, in the long run. So there are a lot of questions. What I would recommend is if you have a product that is tailored for a very specific and passionate audience, then you can think about private labeling and you can think about catering to that passionate audience that you have around you. But if you have a low ticket product with a very wide mass market appeal, the best thing to do, I would say, is scale it as aggressively as you can. So you take advantage of the product strength, which is that mass market appeal, right? And then at a later stage, when you already have a lot of data because you scaled really aggressively and you have a lot of customers, you can play around with email marketing. You can play around with testing other products just to your audience and then really find the identity of the audience and then brand the product and create a brand around that identity but again if we're playing to the product strengths we're going for scalability first because again it's a low ticket product with very very wide mass market appeal now the next thing here is an example to illustrate what i was just trying to convey we have two different rows that we can take depending on what the product is telling us on what the product is itself the example that i have here compares mcdonald's to a michelin star restaurant now if you think about it who has a more sophisticated product? Who has a unique product even? You may have a very, very good chef in a particular restaurant who has his own signature dishes that you cannot find anywhere else, right? So it's an exclusive product. McDonald's on the other hand, have a very, very scalable business model. They don't go for exclusivity. They certainly do not tell you that McDonald's food is made by some famous chef, but they both play to their strengths. Both these business models play to their strength. The Michelin star restaurant is gonna play to exclusivity and it's gonna play to very, very high ticket customers. It's gonna charge very high 
by prices at the cost of scalability. Because of course, if you want to charge those premiums, it's very hard to scale it to a very, very wide mass market because one, there's not going to be that many people that can slash want to afford that price. And two, it's hard to maintain the quality of an offer uh, at a very, very exclusive level if you scale it very, very aggressively. It can be done and sometimes gold mines are made because someone figures out that business model. But in general, that's the rule. McDonald's, on the other hand, they streamline the process and they scale it. To illustrate how absurd it is, the misconception that people sometimes have when they come into e-commerce thinking that they have to find some particularly revolutionary product. Think about this. Who makes more money? Who makes more money? A Michelin star chef? or McDonald's, right? I think it's pretty obvious. Everyone's going to agree that McDonald's makes a ton more money. So this example, and this is where I'm trying to get with the example here. Don't think that you have to reinvent the wheel to have a very scalable and successful product. It, you don't have to. You have to have a good product. McDonald's has an amazing product. Their recipes and their food, regardless of any issues concerning nutrition, health, ethical issues, whatever, there is no denying that their product is amazingly successful because people want to buy it. People like McDonald's food in general, so it sells a lot and it is extremely scalable. And that's the point here, guys. Don't think that you have to reinvent the wheel, play to the strengths of your product, whatever those may be. Now, to start off with the numbers regarding this case study, we have the profit and loss calculations here. This is the revenue that we had, the exact number right here on the screen. We've spent this on Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, TikTok ads, and on the product costs. So these are the costs. These 55,000 is the cost that we've paid to our suppliers during this period of time. So Q4 2021. Calculating the profit margin, of course, this is pre-tax, but pre-tax, the profit margin is 20%, around 20%, so 20.29%, $28,695.03. Now, in terms of the strategy overview here, we're going to go through the steps that we took and I'm gonna elaborate on each one of these. Some of them have been covered in previous videos, and when that is the case, I will mention that and I'll put a link here so you can go and watch the previous video that relates to each part in this case study. The first part, of course, is the testing strategy. The testing strategy has been, of course, covered before on the channel. The testing strategy in my last video, both the low budget and the high budget, they're still perfectly valid and relevant to this day. So 2022, they're still perfectly valid. In this case, the testing strategy that we use was a low budget strategy, because again, this is a low ticket product. And then we have the scaling phase. The scaling phase, there's early scaling, there's late scaling. The early scaling is also covered in depth in the video strategy that we have on the channel. Again, still perfectly valid. Make sure to check that out as well. The retargeting strategy. So this is something that we haven't mentioned on the channel before this is something that i will go a little bit more in detail in this video precisely for that reason and content marketing so when we talk about content marketing in this case we're talking about email marketing providing value to your customers not just blasting sales emails as well as other options that you can use to do content marketing like having a blog page on your website which really does help with seo as well and another new point that we are bringing into this case study because it is extremely valuable and we haven't mentioned it before is the supply chain if you're scaling aggressively you need to pay attention to your supply chain because if you're just out there using your typical AliExpress supplier or CJ dropshipping supplier or whatever, and you start to scale aggressively, they might not be ready for the volume. This can result in increased shipping times and chargebacks, and you can get in trouble. So very important. And this is actually the first point that I want to emphasize here. If you're scaling aggressively, and if you do decide to scale aggressively, you need to make sure that you're constantly communicating with your supplier. So always talk to them, make sure that they're ready, they're capable of handling the volume that you have, the volume that you intend to scale to. Because if they don't they don't have the capacity you need to switch to another supplier because if they cannot handle it you better know beforehand then when your orders start coming in and i really cannot emphasize this enough you can get in trouble if you don't have these things in place and if you don't recognize the capacity that your agent or supplier has in fulfilling your order just to emphasize this point and really give you an idea of how important it is if you don't have this in place this can be as critical as you personally getting a bad credit score because if you get a lot of chargebacks PayPal and Stripe might not only ban your accounts, but it might even result in you getting a bad credit score, which in turn can affect your capacity to just find credit further down the line when you need it for your business or for whatever reasons. Might even have very long term consequences just because you didn't plan this as you should have. Testing strategy, testing phase. This is the low budget testing strategy that we use for this store. So again, I'll leave a link in the corner. Check out the video for the low budget testing and scaling strategy that we've used in this store. Now, other points that I want to make here that are not necessarily related to the ad strategy itself. If you intend to make the most out of Q4, you need to test the products before Q4. So you need to be testing the products in September, maybe even August, right? Because by the time that you get to October, you want to have your winner ready to go. And then you just start scaling very aggressively because you have a limited window of time 
within which you can extract as much value as you possibly can from your customers during Q4 with multiple great uh, seasonal events, which in turn just buy people to buy more online. As early as October, you want to start pushing your product very aggressively. So you want to make sure that your winning product and all the infrastructure is ready to go in the beginning of October. And this is how the testing strategy ties into the other elements in this strategy. So testing first, and then we do early scaling. So it's the less aggressive scaling to make sure that the product can sustain the volume and then retargeting. So we start bringing back all the customers that came to our website, but did not make a purchase. So as to extract the maximum amount of value out of each dollar that we spent on ads and then the late stage scaling, which is when we come in with some manual bidding and some more aggressive scaling techniques. Also for scaling, you want to check out every possible country and placement that you can use for your ads and to advertise your product successfully so if you're doing us or if you're doing just big five make sure to check out the other countries make sure to test the other countries make sure to test a bunch of new creatives to make sure you have the one that gives you the best possible cpa make sure that you're testing all the placements even if you're not using automatic placements isolate different placements see which one gives you the best return so the bottom line is that by early october you have everything your best creatives your best placements your best countries everything as streamlined as possible so you can just focus on scaling. Now the retargeting strategy, this screenshot right here is our two retargeting campaigns that we had running 2.75, 3.05 in return on ad spend. Our break-even return on ad spend for this product was around 1.5. So these were very profitable. And with retargeting, what you want to do is you want to use the platform to create custom audiences based on the people that have already interacted with your business. And then you want to use those custom audiences to focus on those people and make sure that you can get them to come back and make a purchase. So we've used retargeting across multiple platforms. You can use that as well. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on Pinterest. You can do it on TikTok. All of these platforms give you the ability to retarget anyone that's already been through your website or heard about your business in some way. Also use email and SMS flows for retargeting. They're very important and you should not neglect the email SMS side of things because it definitely does bring a very considerable increase in revenue at a very reduced cost when you compare it to marketing platforms like Facebook or TikTok. And then the late stage scaling. So this is the time when we really start to ramp up the budgets from the early scaling phase. So if you've watched the testing strategy and the scaling strategy, you know how you start scaling the early scaling phase. The transition from the early scaling to the late stage scaling is always going to be ramping up the budgets within the same framework as in the early scaling. So that's exactly what we did in this case. After a while though, you will notice that if you're using the lowest cost strategy, it's going to be hard to continue to scale from a certain amount of budget inside of your scaling campaigns. And this is the same that happens for companies when they have a large marketing budget that they want to spend and you can't really do it with lowest cost campaigns because it's not going to be efficient. It's probably not going to be profitable. If you want to spend higher numbers, I recommend that you look into manual bidding and test manual bidding at those higher budgets. So this is what we've done here. We've implemented manual bidding on some of these campaigns. Although we did it at a relatively low scale compared to what you can do, because again, we were keeping tabs on how many orders we could fulfill. And we noticed that there was a lot of stress on our supply chain. And we suspected that if we kept on increasing the volume, we would get into trouble. So we stabilized at around the 100 orders a day mark so as to try and avoid getting into trouble. And this is very important, guys. Remember, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't scale more than the orders that you can fulfill because you really, really want to avoid getting into trouble if you're aiming to create a long term business. Another very important thing if you want to extract maximum value out of the dollars that you spend on your advertising is optimizing your funnel. This is a screenshot from Zipify One Click Upsell. It's an app that I use for upsells. I've mentioned this app before in a previous video. Again, I'll leave a link in the corner to the video where I talk about the apps that I recommend. And before Q4 started, I recommended that you use this app for Q4. And this is what it did for us. It didn't do amazing. It did around 9,000 in revenue, which is not crazy because I think maybe we could have done a better job in implementing the upsells and creating better offers for the upsells and just optimizing the funnel a little bit further than we did and if you think about it it's nine thousand dollars that you just would not have gotten anyway and they came at just the cost of the app so pretty much the only cost other than the product is the app so of course in the end it's still amazing um even if it could have been better never neglect um, your upsells also of course optimizing the funnel is not just about upsells don't forget your email marketing don't forget promotional campaigns especially during q4 in q4 it's absolutely essential to have your promotional events running in your email marketing campaigns if you think about black friday if you think about christmas even a halloween you should have email campaigns set up for these special occasions and now to finish the video we have here two um daily screenshots so the 13th and the 16th of december as you can see around the 100 orders a day 
day mark. This is where we decided to stabilize again because of the supply chain. But overall, of course, we're still very happy about the outcome. We got around 20% profit margins, which is really good with rather aggressive scaling. Remember, the more you scale, the less your profit margins are going to be. Because of course, when you go more aggressive with the media buying and you scale more aggressively, your ROAS tends to lower a bit. And that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. As always, please let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. If you have any suggestions, I always like to hear your feedback. I hope you guys are having a great start to 2022 and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.